Are you trying to decide whether having raised beds are really worth the expense? In this video, I'm gonna tell you why at our next place, we are swapping from raised beds to in-ground beds. And if you hang around right to the very end, you'll be able to find out why. There are some definite pros to having raised garden beds. And they're seen as like the ultimate luxury and the best thing to have, but we have them at the moment. And what we're going to do at the new place is not what we've got here. And it's not that I don't love what we've got here, but we've got some very specific reasons as to why we're doing something else. The pros of having raised beds include, one, they warm up faster at the beginning of the season. Two, they drain a lot better, especially if you have a wet environment, this is really important. You can build raised beds up, I mean, hence the name raised bed. You can actually build them up quite high. So if you've got back issues or mobility issues, a raised bed can be a really great option. Usually you will fill a raised bed with some kind of mixture of topsoil and really good compost. This means that the soil is super nutrient rich, full of organic matter, it retains moisture really well, it's got lots of nutrients and biology and all the good stuff that your plants need to thrive and grow really well, which means you can usually overplant them. You can plant really intensively and get really good amounts of crops out of them. And also, usually that means you have a lot less weed pressure because the soil you have put in there doesn't have weeds in it. They're easy to plan for because they have set sizes and set amounts of plants that you can put in them and they just look great. But for every good thing, there's always a downside as well. And the downside to raised beds is one, they cost a lot. Two, they take a lot to fill up. Three, they do limit how much you can grow because, well, it's limited to how much you can afford to build them. You also end up with less growing area because you end up with such big paths in between them because once you've got those sides up, you still need space to be able to get your wheelbarrows through. And if you live in a particularly dry environment, you may find that your raised beds actually dry out far too much if you're not getting enough rain. So on the other side of the spectrum, we have in-ground beds and pretty much they are the exact opposite of everything that raised beds are. They're slower to warm up, they ha often have a lot more weed pressure, but you can cover a lot more ground with them and they're basically free to plant. In-ground beds are a lot better suited to those larger crops. Like if you're growing large numbers of potatoes or corn or squash, those things that take up a lot of space, they really are better off in ground. You'll save yourselves a lot of money not trying to put all of those crops in raised beds. If you're not 100% sure on your layout of your garden, actually planting in the ground is somewhat a better idea until you're quite sure where you're gonna put everything. Because once your raised beds are in the garden, they're a lot harder to move. And of course, the downside to growing just straight in the ground is that one, you are just using your native soil. And yes, you can amend it, but ultimately your basis of your main amount of soil is going to be what you've already got in the ground. They can be slower to warm up in the beginning of the season, but on the upside, they do also retain water a bit better. So we have just bought ourselves 43 acres and we're starting to plan our garden. It's currently winter here and so we have great plans for springtime. We're putting in a massive tunnel house that'll cover 100 square meters, which is about 1,000 square feet. And I've currently marked out around 200 square meters of what will be vegetable garden. And then there's a couple of other areas that I'll probably put some squash in as well with some weed mat down. So what are we doing? I'll tell you what we're not doing is putting in 3,000 square feet of raised beds. So we've had to come to a compromise. And what is our compromise? Well, we have paid for a soil test, which is something in my entire gardening career I have never done before. But because this is X forestry land and it's had pine trees all over it, I really didn't know where we were starting. So the ground is very acidic. It has really high iron levels, quite high salt levels, but other than that, it's not too bad. So we did get a recipe put together by the people at Seacliff Organics when they did our test for us. They gave us a big recipe of stuff for us to put in to amend that soil. So we have bought enough to cover our 300 square meters to get us started with that. Our great plan is to sprinkle the amendments over that whole area and till it in. And whilst ultimately long-term, we want to do no-till gardens, to start with, we will be tilling 
probably the first couple of years just until we get all the stuff incorporated there's some things with uh, adding stuff to change the pH that you've got to do a few times over you can't just do a one and done sort of solution once we've got those tilled in I'm gonna mark out on contour which way the beds are gonna go and I have a rough idea which direction they're going in and then we will dig out the pathways and mount those into the beds so we'll end up with just straight stripes on contour so those pathways will become basically swales the good thing about a swale in our context is we do get a fair amount of moisture so it will give somewhere for those beds to drain to and we're going to actually fill them up with some wood mulch and that will mean that the wood mulch will act like a giant sponge and soak up the extra moisture so when the sun does come and it does get dry we do go a couple of months without any decent rain over the summer it's not to say it's particularly hot it's just not wet so that will give us a nice reserve to be able to leach back out into the soil and in the meantime it will give give somewhere for that natural fungi network to get started and get established and then those beds that we have created with a nice loose topsoil we will add compost and animal manure into those and then we'll plant directly into there for our crops that are going to be in the ground a little bit longer we will mulch those as well and for our big sprawly crops I definitely plan on putting some weed matting down. That is partly to reduce how much weeding I have to do and partly to stop the gorse seedlings because they have started sprouting already and the last thing I want is my vegetable garden full of prickly horrible gorse. So weed mat will definitely be my friend for the first few years while we try and get on top of that situation. The upsides to our compromise is they are sort of a little bit raised so they will warm up somewhat faster. They will definitely drain somewhat better than being flat completely. They should have somewhat less weed pressure because we'll be able to mulch them as best we can. It will allow the pathways for some fungal networks to get started and hopefully somewhere for the worms to get established. So far we have not seen any, any worms over at that property, none. And we have done a lot of digging. We're gonna to have to take some over there. And I firmly believe that if you build it, they will come. So as soon as we start feeding that soil, I think that the worms will arrive in their numbers and work their magic. And of course, the other downside is we will be competing with weeds. And so we're gonna do a combination of tarping on the off seasons, lots and lots of cover crops, partly to build the soil, and partly to choke out the weeds, as well as mulching when we can. Hopefully, my plan is to regularly hoe and try and keep on top of the weeds. But we'll see how that goes with our busy everything else that's going on. So tell me in the comments below, what kind of garden beds do you have? Which ones would you prefer to have? And what have you grown in before? Tell me about it in the comments below. Have you got any ideas for us for developing this new lot of garden? Please tell me about it. It's much easier to change stuff now than it is once we've already got them started. And if you wanna check out my videos on planning a vegetable garden to feed a family, check them out here. I'll see you in the next one.